Hello students. Today we will learn about the insect pest management. Now insect pest management is one of the uh, crucial need or it is one of the uh, very uh, imperative need in case of today's uh, developments. Insect pest management has gained the more and more importance because we have uh, developed in more in the agricultural field we have increased our yield productions okay we have increased our yield production and there is a lots of pressure uh, to increase the yield of the agriculture that is due to the increase in the population now that is in the 1970s that green revolution took place and the green revolution has remarkably contributed in increasing the per acre yield that is it has increased the uh, high varieties of wheat, rice, maize and other grains and cereals okay and because of this there is a lots of uh, storage facilities also have increased and for with this increased grains and the uh, storage grains and then as well as the agricultural uh, development the pests also have increased the pests also have increased now there is a need of a proper management to control this insect pest their growth as well as their population is to be checked. Now, what is this pest? A pest is an insect judged by a human. Okay, pest, any insect cannot be said as a pest, but a human who feels that it is harming himself, his crops, his animals and his property. So such an insect can be said as a pest insect Okay, or an insect pest and in farming in farming it can be classified as the one which is causes a damage to a crops livestock that's animals and sufficient reduce the yield or quality of the invested product harvested product by an amount that is unacceptable to the farmer is it clear a pest is the one which is causing uh, sufficient damage to the crops livestock storages and then uh, reducing the quality as well as the quantity of the harvested product okay by an amount that which is not uh, acceptable to the farmer that can be said as a pest now to control the pest there should be a proper uh, management or there should be proper uh, effective methods should be evolved by the uh, by the mutual of farmers as well as the entomologist. The entomologist and the farmers must evolve some of the uh, efficient methods to control the pest so that it can be uh, useful in his agricultural field as well as in his the uh, storage conditions. Now we will discuss that is what this pest control management do that it should take care that the difficulty uh, the survival difficulty of the pest should be carried out that is then as well as the multiplication of this pest should be completely controlled okay for this there is a, another uh, very important pest management is uh, evolved that is called as the integrated pest management integrated pest management that is this pest man integrated pest management is one of the efficient method to control the pests. Now, the, according to the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the IPM integrated pest management involves the control of the pest by the combination of all the different types of the pest control methods. Okay, IPM is not a single, it is an integrated, it is an integrated which involves the different types of pest management methods that may be a cultural method or that may be a, the biological methods, chemical methods, the uh, legal methods. Okay, so these all methods together forms one uh, management and that can be said as the integrated pest management IPM. Is it clear? That's what it's, I said that it includes the mechanical, physical, legal, chemical, then the biological methods to control the pests. Now, there are usually two methods for the insect pest population control. That is, the one is called as the natural control 
method and the another one is the applied natural method and applied method now what is this natural method the natural method of pest control is the one where there is no involvement of human beings there is no involvement of human beings that is the all the pests are controlled by the means of only nature okay that's what by the natural factors that is called as the natural method of insect pest uh, population control the another one is the applied now the applied control of the pest is completely involved with the complete involvement of the human beings in the applied that is there is a complete involvement of the human activities to control the pests so that is the natural method and the applied method now here in the natural control of the pest we will study about the climatic factors topographic factors natural enemies and in the applied control that is the mechanical physical cultural legal chemical biological and hormonal is it clear so these are the different types of uh, pest control methods we will discuss in this class or in this video now the natural control i told you what is the natural control that is the profess, uh, the proper balancing among the various species in the nature is maintained by some natural agencies is it clear by the natural agencies there is no involvement of the human beings to control the pest whatever the means and methods are there that is all are the natural type now in this we will discuss about the climatic factor topographic factors is it clear now what do you mean by climatic factor here the climate the each pest is present in its own habitat with a particular type or a specific type of a climates that may be a temperate that may be a tropical or it may be a arctic now these climatic factors the pests are completely inhabited or adapted to this type of climatic factor if there is any changes in the climatic factor there is a uh, effect to the uh, pests they may lose their uh, physiological activities or they may suffer and their population is reduced so the change in the climatic factor reduces the pest population that is the uh, climatic factor of the pest control then another one that is the topographic factors now these pests are distributed at different places or separated by the different uh, structures of the earth that is the, they may be separated by the water bodies okay that may be ocean that may be rivers lakes streams ponds is it clear or they may be separated by certain uh, the elevations of the soil okay that may be mountains etc now if these pests are unable to move from one place to another place or they may not pass from the water bodies to another side so that will also reduce the uh, rate of spreading or infection of this pests so they are limited to that particular place only that is the uh, topographic factors also involved in the reduction of the crop uh, pest uh, population now the natural enemies okay the pests have their own natural enemies in the form of predaceous and parasites okay there are predaceous as well as parasitic insects now the number of this predaceous and the parasites the most of this predaceous are the one which feeds the pest okay that is what they are the natural predators of the pest these predators eats the pests and reduces their population and there is one more thing that is the uh, cannibalism eating the members of their own species okay eating the members of their own species is called as cannibalism you will find in some of the insects that is they eat their own members is it clear and that is called as the cannibalism cannibalism in the pest is also one of the very advantaged method to control the uh, pests in the natural way and here it is a predaceous it eats the there are some natural predators which feeds on the uh, pests so that is about the natural enemies now in the natural enemies there is another that is the birds we know that the most of the birds they feed on the insects most of the birds feeds on the insects and the birds feed the such a quantity of insects that sometimes they eat the uh, insects equivalent to their body weight equivalent to their body weight that is the um, 
as if it is a staple food. And then the, you will see that the Indian robin, okay, Indian robin, and this is the uh, gray cat bird. These are the birds which feed on the insects usually in the summer, is it clear? So that's what the uh, natural enemies, birds. Then there are many mammals, okay, there are many mammals which feed on the insects. This squirrel, squirrel it's the grubs, grubs is the larvae which are infested in the soil, is it clear? Then the uh, shrive, this is the shrive, then the skunk, okay, salamander, and the snakes and many other animals, is it clear? The toads, these all are the one which feeds on the insects and controls the insect pest population. So mammals and other animals, these all have the, they eat the different types of pests, okay? Now, that is all about the natural. In the natural, we have discussed about the uh, climatic factor, topographic factor, and then the uh, natural enemies that is in the form of predaceous and the parasites, then the birds, mammals and other animals which feeds the insects and then reduces the pop their population in the natural way. Now the applied control. Applied control we have discussed, these, the success of the applied control is completely depend upon the human activities. So that is the applied control of pest is the one of the uh, most advanced method we are following nowadays is the integrated pest management which is defined uh, just now. So here in the applied we will discuss about the mechanical control. <clears throat> now what is this mechanical control? That is the reduction of the pest population by means of manual devices. Reduction of the pest population by the means of the manual devices that is with or without the aid of specially designed equipment with or without the specially designed equipment is called as mechanical control is it clear that is we are reducing the pest population mechanically without with or without using the specialized devices that is called as the mechanical control of pests in this, there is a hand picking of the larvae, okay, hand picking of the larvae. Now here, the hand picking of the larvae, in this, the cutworms or the leaf eating caterpillar, red pumpkin, beetles, which are sluggish, okay, which are sluggish, not so fast enough for their movement. So they are uh, easily available, uh, visible and can be picked by the hands, that is called as the uh, hand picking of the larvae. See, you can see here, the we can pick this larvae uh, by the hands and then collect and destroy them. That is called as the hand picking of the larvae. Then, there is a another that is the beating with the sticks. Now, we when the swarm of the locust comes, okay, locusts. Now, swarm means a mass or a group of these locusts come at one place, then it can be easily bitten by the sticks. Then some of the adults, that is the white grub, adults of white grub larvae, okay, they gather on the neem or the bubble trees and when they gather on the neem or the bubble trees, the parts of the plants can be shaken, that's the branches, etc. When we shake those branches or the trees, what will happen? Those all adults will fall on the ground and once they fall on the ground, we can collect them and we can destroy. That is the one of the shaking of the tree method. Beating with the stick, that is when the swarm comes, we used to beat them with the sticks and then we destroy it. Then there is a sieving and Winnowing, saving and winnowing. The pest can be, the pests can be uh, controlled by these two methods, that is the uh, saving and the winnowing. Usually the stored grains, okay, the stored grains, they are made to fall uh, in the open area with the wind. Is it clear? It will be having a two parts, that is one is the heavier part and the another one is the lighter part of that, okay, lighter part of that. So this is, you can see here, the winnowing, that is the lady, what she is doing, she is dropping the grain in the open space. So the heavier part is falling at one and the lighter part of that uh, grains is falling a little bit ahead. So there is a formation of the two heaps. So the uh, worms or the larvae which are present, which are lighter, they go away from that and that, that is the one of the method. And the another one is the sieving. 
that is whenever the uh, uh, food grains or something which is mixed with the liquid we can drain it that is called as the sieving method by that if it is unfiltered so such larvae or the pest can be separated by that is it clear that is called as the sieving and winnowing now rope dragging in field rope dragging in field usually the rice case worm larva okay the pupate and uh, present on the leaves okay they present on the leaves in this method a rope is tied or holded at the two places okay the rope is a uh, long rope is to be taken and the two persons or should hold it at the two ends and then they drag it on the rice leaves okay they drag it on the rice leaves disturbing the place or the position of those larvae or the uh, pest present on the rice leaves is it clear that is what they are present on the crops is it clear so that is called as the rope dragging okay by dragging the rope we can remove those attached uh, larvae or the pest present on those leaves now uh, the another one is the banding of the trees okay banding of the trees here you can see this one that is the woman has a rope in her hand and then she is moving on the top of that with this one end and then dropping those all pests at the ground is it clear then another one is called as the branding of the tree banding of the tree sorry banding of the tree now these some of the mealybugs on mango comes on the soil for egg laying which can be prevented by uh, putting sticky bands on the stems see here that is in this photo the sticky bands are are placed on the stem the sticky bands are placed on the stem so these insects when come on that sticky band they will get stickered and then they can be mechanically removed so that is called as the sticky banding method of removing the pests now the bagging of the fruits okay bagging of the fruits most of the fruits are affected by the uh, many of the insects like that may be uh, fruit flies etc or there are certain moths fruit sucking moths okay then uh, these moths or these flies can be avoided by bagging the fruits by bagging the fruits that is the fruits can be bagged so that they are safe and they cannot be uh, affected with these worms now that is called as the bagging of the fruit so what are these the advantages of this mechanical method there skilled labors are not required for this okay we don't need any skilled labor then the cost required is very less for this there are no side effects for this type of uh, pest control methods but what are the limitations here that is the time and labor required is high and this method is applicable only on small scale and is required repeated uh, application is required for this method we need to repeat this application okay thank you uh, today uh, we have discussed about the insect pest management in the insect pest management we have discussed about the definition of the integrated pest management we have discussed about what is pest then after about uh, above all we have also discussed the types or the methods of pest control that is the natural type of method and the applied method in natural method no human activities are involved whereas in applied human activities are involved then in natural we have discussed about the topographic then we have discussed about the uh, climatic factors topographic factors and natural enemies is it clear then we have discussed about the applied in the applied today we discussed about the mechanical methods okay different types of mechanical methods we have discussed and that is the uh, comes in the applied method is it clear okay thank you in the next class we'll discuss about the uh, different uh, methods of applied pest control